Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a gaming PC build for $400. So this is really aimed at getting you enough performance for about as cheap as possible. So no, you're not going to be able to max out Crisis 3 with this, however it should be able to play pretty much any game you throw at it on at least medium to high settings. To show off the performance, first we have Battlefield 3. Now this is hardly a brand new game, however it is fairly good looking and still very popular, and for this we're going to be able to run it on high settings at 1080p. Now we have Crisis 3, which is in my opinion still the best looking PC game out right now, and even the most powerful systems out, it's still very very demanding. And here we're going to be able to play it on medium settings, and it actually runs pretty well. Bioshock Infinite is another new game that's come out this year that I absolutely love. Not only does it have great graphics, but it also has some fantastic art style and direction in the game. And for here we are going to be able to run it on medium settings. Last but not least, we have Metro Last Light. Now this is another very graphically intense game that some graphics cards which cost more than this entire computer can't even max out. So here we're going to be able to run it on normal settings at 1080p without any problems. To kick the build off, we're going to be using an AMD Athlon X4750K. Now this is an awesome budget CPU, as it is basically an AMD A10 5800K where you get rid of the integrated graphics and chop a bunch off the price. So for what we're doing with this build, we don't need any of that stuff, so it just allows us to save some money, and we're still getting a very, very powerful processor, with a quad-core design clocked it up to 4 GHz, which is kind of awesome, and on top of that, you can also go ahead and feel free to overclock it even more if you want to get just a little bit more performance out of it. Regardless though, this is going to run you about $75. For a motherboard, we're going to be using an MSI FM2 A75 MA E35. So very long name aside, this is a great choice for this build. As for starters, it has pretty much all the features that we need without having to pay a lot extra for stuff that we really aren't going to use. So for example, it does support overclocking with our processor. It's not necessary, but the option is there if you want to try to get a little bit more performance out of your CPU. In addition, it also does support both USB 3 as well as SATA 3. So that means that you can connect very fast USB hard drives. In addition to connecting an SSD if you ever decide to upgrade, it's all no problem. Just slap it in and you're going to be good to go. So all of this for about $60 is going to make it a fantastic choice for this build. For a graphics card, we're going to be using an XFX Radeon HD 7770GHz edition. Now for budget builds like this, I really do like this card as it's fairly affordable, but still going to give you enough performance to play most games on medium or high settings like I showed you guys earlier, as well as if you have a little bit of an older game, it should be able to play it maxed out with no problems. So it is equipped with 1GB of GDDR5 memory, as well as a core clock of 1GHz, that's the name, the GHz edition, and all of this for $100 is going to make it a great fit for the build. For memory, we're going to be using 4GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR3 RAM. Now this is the same stuff that I recommend in pretty much all of my builds. It's fast, it's reliable, and there's not a whole lot to complain about. Now it is only 4GB, so it's not going to be a ton of memory, however for pretty much any games, like normal use and that kind of stuff, it is going to be enough. However, you can go ahead and upgrade this to 8GB of RAM, and I will have a link to that in the description as well. However, if you just want to stick with the 4GB version, you are still going to be able to get 1600MHz rated RAM, plenty fast, all for about $40. For a hard drive, we're going to be using a 500GB Western Digital Caviar Blue. Now Western Digital makes great hard drives, and the Blue series is no exception, as they're going to be fairly reliable and decently quick, definitely not as fast as an SSD, but for normal gaming and that kind of stuff, it's going to be plenty fast. So it is a 500GB hard drive, so you do have plenty of capacity for games and media and all that kind of stuff. However, there is also a 1TB version if you need a little bit more storage, and of course I will have that linked in the description as well. However, if you do just want to go with the 500GB version, it's going to run you about $55. For a case, we're going to be using the NZXT Source 210. Now a lot of times when you get a budget case, they can be a little bit iffy, the build quality might not be all that great, you might have rough edges around, it might just simply be difficult to work in. However, the Source 210 is a fairly affordable case that actually just doesn't suck. So I've done several builds in this and I liked it quite a bit. It is a full-size ATX enclosure, which means you're going to have plenty of room for everything that you're going to be putting in the system, as well as additional upgrades in the future. And on top of that, it's also going to be very nice and easy to work in, all for about $40. For the power supply, we're going to be using a 430 watt Corsair CX430. Again, this is another one of those parts that I love to go back to on my budget builds because it's cheap without actually being bad. So there's definitely a big difference there and a power supply is basically the heart of your build. So if you get really kind of cheap out on this, you can definitely have some major issues with your system. So a Corsair CX430 is going to be solid for the system, plenty of power to supply to all the components, but it's also an 80 plus bronze certified power supply, which means that's going to be fairly high quality. You don't have to worry about any kind of random explosions in your computer, which are typically not the best thing and all this is going to run you about $40.
So there you go, an awesome $400 gaming PC build. Of course, prices are always changing, so I will have links to everything I mentioned in the description of this video, as well as there are some additional upgrades in there. So for example, if you want to add a DVD drive, add Wi-Fi, maybe a bigger hard drive or some more RAM, I will have all those links in the description of this video. If you're interested in more, be sure to subscribe to me here on YouTube, as I do a new PC build video every single month. Anyway guys, I will catch you next time. Unless you didn't subscribe, but, you know, otherwise I'll catch you next time. And on top of that, if you've got a game that's maybe just a little bit older, more than likely you can just straight out, flat out, what? A one terabyte version, they've got that, as well as I don't think there's anything higher than that, so I should probably stop talking. So it is equipped with one gigabyte of GDDR5 memory, as well as it does have a chlor... 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 <laughs> words... 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 And you can also, if you've got a game that's maybe just a little bit older, probably just max it out, but it's also fairly affordable... Uh...